what is happening guys and welcome to a new series as you've seen in the intro we are taking over celtic last season rangers won their first title since they got i don't know what got was it liquidated i don't think they got liquidated did they? since they got basically kicked out of the premiership and put into the bottom division where they've worked their way up and to be honest with you steven gerrard is flying but obviously they finished 25 points clear of celtic so I thought, with obviously the new updates, what I've done, I've got rid of all the players that were there. So we were left with kind of the core squad. So Scott Brown left, John Joe Kenny left, but came back. He did, I can prove that. Um, but I want to see, are they that far ahead? Looking at the squads, the squads, they have got a miles better squad. We didn't have a lot of money. We've got rid of Lee Griffiths because of um, the less about that, the better. But... Let's get into it. We'll see who we've signed. We'll see who we have today. It is the Champions League. We played a few league games to kind of get a grip to the team. But we do have Riga today. Let's get into it. See who we've signed. See what formation we're playing. Fingers crossed we can get a win today. So here we are. Confirmation that we are at the Skonto Stadions for it's actually only one leg. I thought it was two legs. It's not. It's just the one. Against Riga FC from Latvia, probably the biggest club in Latvia. You see, I can't really see a win, but look at this. Yeah, Riga FC, FC, FK Riga's second. Weird game. Uh, obviously, I don't really know a lot of Riga players, and none of them you can actually look at, so that is what it is, isn't it? But, first of all, we're going to go through the tackling and explain the situation I had in pre-season. So I went for the 5-2-2-1. Um, not tried this before. I was kind of learning on the job, but I have brought in some great players to try and fill them roles. Um, what the thing we did not have was a right wing back. John Joe Kenny will obviously fit that purpose perfectly. We also signed Jack Hunt, who's not fully fit yet, but as I said, transfers we'll get to in a minute. So this kind of formation, we're playing short passing, play out of defence, work the ball in the box. Kind of, you know, we have a lot of men here. It's worrying so I'm on this on the uh, obviously the uh, defensive wise forward midfield I'm hoping will kind of slot in here he'll break up some play. But distributed centre backs, distributed full backs. I don't know why that's on, that shouldn't be on. It's just centre backs I want. And um, we have when position's been lost, we want to regroup so everyone just drops back. And then out of possession, we just press more urgently. Kind of yeah, I was gonna push these up here. Or at least push one up and kind of make a bigger gap. It's just I've never ever played the whole, I always play like the, the pressing. I never ever played like, like back off now. So, going to see how that one goes so far. Um, big, big sign here is Odson Edouard. Not signing, he stayed. He's brilliant. If we can keep him for a season, I'm happy, then we can let him go. But, let's have a look who we have brought in. We have been very, very busy. So, does it tell me who went out? Doesn't, does it? No. Basically, I released a lot, a lot of players, right? Um, John Joe Kenny, he went. He obviously came in for the last season on loan. And obviously, I, I just got rid of everybody that wasn't in the squad. Everybody got was left. And then it kind of left me to try and work out what I needed to fit what I wanted to do. So, to make that happen, I had to sell Lee Griffiths. So he went for £5.75 million, pounds, as I said before. We're not going into that. Um, Vincent Angelini went to Elgin City on loan and Connor Hazard, who's a goalkeeper who they I've got for if if he turns decent, right? I'm getting I'm getting forty percent of the profit of the next sale. So um, he can go for that. Got Brown left on a free, obviously he's one that went there. And I think that was about it, I think. I can't remember off the top of my head. But coming in, we started here. So Liam Shaw and Osse Osaz. Urugahidi butchered that. These are the players that were already signing for Celtic regardless, so they're at the club and now. Both from Sheffield Wednesday, I've put the exact amount of money we had to spend on them as well. Next up, we have John Joe Kenny. I mean, he's outstanding. He'll fill this white wing back role. I can't talk today, can I? What am I talking about? Right wing back role, very, very nicely. Love his work rate. Luckily, he's just literally perfectly made for this. His dribbling needs improving. At 23 years of age, you wouldn't think he's going to improve that much. But I think for this for the Scottish Prem, he's, he's pretty decent. Jack Hunt was the obviously the second ladder signed. Just kind of 
Kenny is obviously number one. Hunt is in just behind him. First touch isn't the best. Marking isn't the best, but I kind of got him because I just want him to bomb on. Obviously, work rate in them positions for me personally is incredibly important. For £325,000, he does a perfect job at being a backup. Next up, we have Nick Powell. I've signed this man a few times. I don't know, Barnsley two, see, like two FMs ago, and he was absolutely incredible. Probably changed now, but I thought, you know, attacking mids, we're playing two of them. He should be able to do as a job. He only scored five and 29 for Stoke. But I do think he, he'll, he'll, he should complement odds on Edouard incredibly, incredibly well. Next up, £1.9 million. Lee Tomlin, 31 years of age. This one to me is, in hindsight, is a bit silly. It's a bit silly. I mean, he played a lot of games last season for Cardiff, who did do relatively well. A lie, actually, isn't it? Because that's the year before. I can't remember what they did the year before. I haven't got a clue. I think McCarthy, though, doesn't want him. He's sent him over to Celtic. I think he will do it. He'll, he'll do a job for us, I think. And if Edouard gets injured, there's always a chance for us to play three centre attacking mids, in which case he would slot in incredibly, incredibly nicely. Next up is the man from my club, Tyler Roberts. I mean, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of him. He, obviously, he's Welsh. He's, when he's come on, he hasn't looked brilliant. He's really turned on at the back end of season just finished for Leeds. I think uh, start of the season, back end of the championship within season, he was kind of getting used to that position. But now I think he kind of has that centre attacking mid roll down. Um, hey, if I can help out Bielsa, right, get this player off his hands. 21 year old, I'll do it, I'll do it. He should do us a job here as well. Then, ball in the midfielder role is this basically what I signed this guy for. Alexander Tete, 34 years of age. He's just a beast, and he? he's a beast. He hasn't got a lot of pace. Marking 15, tackling 15, work rate 16. This man is going to smash this. But what I thought, right, when I saw he was actually on the transfer list, I. With the money I had, I couldn't really afford to go out there and try and sign a player that wasn't on the transfer list because it just wasn't there. But Tete is like the Norwegian Scott Brown, isn't he? He could be a beast if he wanted to be. And last but not least, Nicolas Ibanez. Right, let go Madrid. He looks solid, to be fair. 25 years of age. I just don't really like a jetty. Jetty, obviously, they've signed him for £4.5 million from my Sam. Not a massive fan of him, but... You know, that is who we... But going to today's game, I've actually decided, just when I've been over the transfers there, to change something, right? We have Azure in there. I'm going to put Cham in here. I'm going to put Tete on in that role. I think this makes us a little bit more solid in that kind of way. We have a lot of the midfielders that probably will not make the cut now. One thing I've noticed, I've got Bo Bolignoli, right, who was... Uh, that was where he must be. Basakashia FK is where I pulled him back from because he's on loan there last season. And he is a wing back and he's not registered. Brilliant. 10 out of 10, dynamite. But let's have a look at these. We have played three games so far. We've scored six, conceded none. Hamilton, Academicals. Anton Edouard with two goals. Ryan Christie with another one. Hillman, I don't know what went on here, right? We'll go in that game in a second. We'll look at Aberdeen first. Aberdeen, one of the better teams, I think, in this in this division. Um, I think it was like Aberdeen, Hibs, us, Rangers. Kind of it. Probably really insulting to anyone else I forgot. No, it was not. Um, so to, to beat them 3 0, right? And just after we've come off of a 0 0 against Kilmarnock, which was a weird game in itself. A very, very weird game in itself. 11 shots, 3 on target. We'd never ever looked like scoring. Obviously, Ibanez did start that game. Edward did come on for a bit, didn't really do a lot. So on for the last like 15 minutes. Weird. I mean, they had one shot, none on target, so you'd have thought we'd have made most of that, but it is what it is. I want to go cautious. I'm going to stay balanced. But this is the team. We have Farkas in goal, Julian Beaton and Urigahide at the back, McGregor on the left, Tete as the ball in midfield in defensive mid, John Joe Kenny on the right, Nutrim in the middle. Christy Roberts in attacking mid and Edouard leading the line. Well, we'll see how this goes. Riga FC. We travel over there to Latvia for this game. I'm going to tell us to have fun. I have faith. And what I've done for qualifications and experience, I've just done 
like I recommended with Celtic because I didn't want to have everybody hate me. But the save wouldn't last very long in that sense, would it? But we've already got a free kick. Christie steps up to take it. But he tries to sneak it in that near post. Been very, very unlikely to score that one, but it's fine. It's fine. But 10 minutes in, we haven't really created a lot, which is worrying. <laughs> which is worrying. We are away from home. We're unbalanced. We're not on um, anything drastic. They're playing... They've got a massive gap here, like. Hmm. Oh, they've got two win-backs. Oh, they've got two win-backs. Five shots, none on target. I'm going to demand a little bit more and see if we can get something out of them. We're in half time. Quite positive, to be fair. Seven shots, none on target, though. Always press him. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Oh, Edward. I don't know why Edward's taking that, but... Put it over. Can we get a goal before half time? I'm still going to make a change, I think, but McGregor... Loads it in. Cesar back post. Cesar. Uh, oh, God. What am I saying? I'm not happy, boys. Right, but what I want to do here, right, is I'm going to change this round a bit. I'm going to change this. I'm going to put Edward there. Roberts alongside him. Christie in the middle. It's in a weird formation now, but I kind of want how we do pressing forward. False we'll do on false nine support. Dressing room. We'll start second half. We we'll do close this off before extra time. To be perfectly honest with you. Two shots on target already in five minutes. We're kind of getting more shots. We're getting loads of shots, but we're just not making it count. I'm going to take off work ball in the box. Maybe restricting some sort of air. But 14 shots, two on target. We must be due a goal soon. Right, we'll pause the game quick. Let's see what we can change here. I'm thinking maybe Nick Powell on. But we'll bring Nick Powell on for there. Then I'm going to bring on James Forrest for Roberts. Put Roberts out. Put Forrest out. Oh, yeah, because Forrest is primarily a winger. We'll put one, oh, thought we'll put one inside forward on attack. Keep Edward over that way. Go positive because we are all over them. And here we go. Hoggardins with a throw in. McGregor wins. And Cham to McGregor. McGregor, can he find a pass? He's got a lot of space to run into. Up to Roberts. It's a terrible ball, to be fair. It's not Roberts' fault. John Joe Kenny. A little bit more positive now, aren't we? We're getting there. Look a bit more. That's a foul. Rukovic. Is that red? Is he already yellow? He is as well. He's off. He is off. We're going to go attacking for the last 15 minutes. Get this win in 90. The ball. <laughs> it's a ball formation. We are not getting anything out of this. That's our corner. But let's try and have a look at what I can do here. <sighs> See, I don't really know. I don't really want to do wreck anything. Do you know what I mean? It's going to be penalty soon, isn't it? It's going to be penalty soon. We're going to put Ibanez on. Let's go. And Cham ball in. That is a terrible ball in. Corners are something we are not too good with. And Cham again. Better delivery this time, maybe? It is. James Forrest floats it at the back post. I think he also got the man sent off as well. That's nice to see. Let's have another look at that delivery. Miles better than his corner. His corner was absolutely shocking. James Forrest doesn't even lose his marker. He's just lucky you win that header, I think, to be honest with you. Three with tactical changes. 22 shots, five on goal. One goal. Not the best, is it? McGregor. Ibanez in the middle. Pete. Powell. Forrest. Kenny. Kenny. What are you doing, son? Ball over the top to McGregor. Oh, I thought it would be like Luke Shaw there last night. Nicholas Ivan there is with a rocket. He knew nothing about that. That has just hit him in the head. I'm claiming that right now. That has hit him straight in the head. He had no idea that was going to happen. Easy as here. Ball's put in. Oh, he didn't know about it. We'll give him that. Celtic 2, Riga 0. We waited later on, but we got the two goals. 88th minute and 94th minute. 
I'm happy with that result, boys. There we go. 2-0. That is what we needed. We play FC Cluj in the next round, who are a very, very good team. They're, you know, they used to <laughs> they used to put in performance, aren't they? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go away and then the next episode we'll come back for that Cluj game because these games are very important to getting us some money. Obviously, I couldn't change but obviously Rangers aren't in I don't think you Rangers are in Europe. So I think they're in the Europa League, maybe. Yeah, I couldn't change that. Plus, I'm not very good with the edit. I just use the in-game editor to, to edit the players. But Cluj is in the next episode. So there we go. Um, it's a decent win in the end. We should have probably scored about 50 goals there, but we didn't. Cluj up next is a very, very tough game. Dundee United in between isn't much to uh, be buzzing about. It's going to be tight. It's a week between them. We also have a game between. I imagine they will too. Fingers crossed we can get the win. It'd be nice to get in, if we get in the group stages. There's a lot of money coming in. So it means next season when we're still. I'm doing a few seasons here. But next season, if we get a bit of money, maybe a bit of transfer budget and really pull in something that we could do with. We don't actually play Rangers until October the 17th, which will be an episode. Obviously, we do need to make it that far first. <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. This, this new uh, series I'm doing. It's something different. I, I know obviously I'm massive. I've never ever been in Scotland before. So it'll be interesting to see how that one ends up. Obviously, I know I'm Celtic, one of the better teams in Scotland. But obviously, it's more of a rebuild anyway. Everyone knows Celtic could do a big, big, big rebuild. But we'll see how it goes. Thank you for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, comment down below what you think will happen this season. Will I beat Steven Gerrard at the first time I try and... <laughs> 